All right, y'all, we back with another episode of Dynasty Art TV. And the first and probably the most important question, who are you? What do you do? Hi. Or shall I say, hey, y'all. Um, I'm Dejan T. You know what I'm saying? Queen of Carolina, your favorite host, your favorite promoter, your favorite manager, your favorite all of that. It ain't nothing in the world that I don't do. Asking you, shall I receive? All right. Now, um... First question, were you an artist before you were a manager? No. Well, unless the church choir count and recording an album with them, nah. Just been chilling, you know what I'm saying? Lover of music, grew into the management thing. So what was uh what was the moment you decided to step into that managerial role? Um, I didn't. My artist Lil Gordon and Freeport Donnie actually decided it for me. Um Pretty much, I was actually low-key being a promoter and didn't know I was being a promoter type thing. A little Gordon came about, he's like, yo, you should be my manager. And I'm just like, nah. But eventually over time, like I kind of grew to love what he was showing me, the way that things were coming about and forming up. So I decided to pop out. And when I popped out, the shit blew up. So we stuck with it. Three years later, here I am. So I guess, uh, what was that moment for you that you knew this is what you were meant to do? Cool. That's an interesting one. I ain't never been asked that one before. Um, oh, goodness. I don't know. Three times. What was that? What was that? Uh, this is for you moment. Um, maybe. You know what? I ain't going to cap. As far as promotions go, it was when Cody Weaver, who's actually one of my mentors, she's one of the people that helped, you know, bring me onto the music scene in South Carolina. Um, when she reached out to me to host a little Boosie show in Sumter, like I was fresh on the scene, and she was like, "Yo, you trying to come host this show?" And I'm like, "Who me?" She was like, "Yeah." She put me on the flyer, so that was like that first, all right, the people who actually want to see you type thing. But then when it came to the manager side of this thing, to be completely honest with you, I just had that moment back in June. You feel what I'm saying? Um, when we did the DGB interview, the clip that they used, the shit went crazy. Like it went viral instantly. Like when it dropped, it went off. Like we're at about five or six K on YouTube, like 16,000 on the Off The Porch page, 14,000 on Sauce Carolina, like and it's going crazy on Facebook still. So I think that was really the moment that I knew this managerial shit was what I really wanted to do and what I really love because People gonna always watch, you know what I'm saying? They see some titties, a dark skinned bitch with some shiny ass lips, they gonna tap the fuck in, you feel what I'm saying? But the comments, when you read the comments, it wasn't about what I looked like or anything more than what I was saying. The people felt what I was saying and that's when I realized like, I'm really that bitch. <laughs> so on the flip side, can you speak on issues you have had or you know still have being a woman in this industry, let alone black woman? Being a woman in this industry, um, it's always, that's always the gift and the curse, to be completely honest. That's the gift and the curse. Being a woman, you got a different type of charm that you can use. There are things that I can say, things that I can do to kind of, you know what I'm saying, finesse my way on through that man can't necessarily do and get away with. However, um, it gets challenging every now and then. It still gets challenging every now and then on the simple fact that because you're a woman or because you don't necessarily have the, I guess, longevity in the situation, they kind of, they downplay what you got going on or if you can do it alone. A lot of people didn't think that I could really mus muscle this company the way that I have by myself or as long as I have. Um, I just recently moved one of my artists up to A&R and development coach to be able to help me on the business side of things. but. They always, they always gonna look at you as the underdog when you're a woman. And when you're a black woman, it's like, ah, she's just gonna be a hothead. She's gonna be controlling. She's this, that, and third. My artists got free reign to do whatever it is that they wanna do. Like, I don't hold nothing over their heads. I let them do what they do, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I'm not the boss. The artist is the boss. I just take their dreams and shoot me to the full sports ahead. All right, so um, to touch back on what you just said, you said, you know, you started this salon and you had to muscle your way. Well, now that you, know, you do have a team around you, can you speak on your team? Yes, I love to speak on my team. Um, as you can see, you know, DTM, Dejan Team Management, consists of, you have Freeport Donnie, who is the A&R and development coach. You have Lil Gordon, who is an artist, uh, Fame Oliver, who is an artist, 
Vando Boomin, you have Rock Nate, you got Polo Poppy Ortiz, who is our choreographer and our dancer. You got DJ Big Sal, like I said, who's the DJ. Um, am I missing anybody? Because the team is really like that. Um, make sure. Yeah, that's all my babies. Like, um, we're a real strong team. You know what I'm saying? It's real. It's really a, a family-oriented type of situation. There is no competition. There is no I. There is no I'm going first. No, none of that extra shit. Like, we real life move like a unit because the goal it's, it's a collective goal, you know what I'm saying? We all trying to reach the top. How we get there, the path they take, it might be slightly different, but that's where I come in to make sure that that path is one that's going to be progressive. But it's been solid. I can honestly say I pretty much still have the same team I had from day one. Along my way, I've lost maybe two artists, and it was a mutual decision, no bad blood, no nothing. So I think DTM has been pretty strong and a pretty has a pretty solid foundation. And just to leak the exclusive, all I'm going to say is determined to make it. Y'all gonna see what I mean in just a few months. All right, and uh, is there a method to your madness, or do you handle every artist and everything case by case? Um, both. There's always a method to my madness. I am one of the most unorthodox people I know in business. Um, everybody's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got some artists who are more laid back, and I have to kind of take charge and initiate a lot of things with. Then I have some artists who I don't have to do nothing but just answer the phone with. Then I have the ones that's more so like, well, I wanted to make sure, you know what I'm saying, how you feel about this right quick before I make this type of move. Everybody's just a little bit different. Some people, they already know who they are, they know what they want. So it's not so much as me being hands on within the career, just necessarily organizing and making sense out of, you know what I'm saying, and making it grow. However, when it comes to the development side of things like with other artists that i work because i work with hundreds of artists all the time from the showcases to the live reviews everything um they're all different like everybody doesn't need the same thing some people need promotions some people don't need promo they actually need help in the damn studio some people don't need help in the studio they need those visuals and those other resources so i just kind of based it on what the artist needs and what i can actually provide to them as to how I work with them. Every contract is different. Everybody needs something different. All right, now can you tell the people about you know your introduction and current involvement and your current position with Pyrex Battle League? Oh, Lord. Um, currently, I am co-lead owner of Pyrex Battle League. You know, low country, no country. We from SC. That's how we do it. You know, scream it all the time. You follow me on social media. You definitely see the cards. You definitely see the shirts. Like, you hear me talk about it on live reviews. Um, we are just that rap battle league in the South. South Carolina to be exact. Um, the cards that we do are phenomenal. You got me, you got Sun, you got Mr. Bay. We've got a really dope and admin administration up under us that works well like a family. Like one thing about being in the jungle, everybody's got your back. You know what I'm saying? Like Bay loves to say everything in the Pyrex sticks together because we all got each other's back. If you don't got it, we got it over here. If you slacking my nigga, I got you right here. Um, it is really difficult sometimes dealing with a bunch of entitled ass niggas. However, <laughs> um, I've learned that in battle rap, this is the one place where I can kind of tone my professionalism down. You know what I'm saying? Like I can actually be more down to earth and actually talk to these guys. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, people got shit going on. Battle rap is training niggas to have this train of thought where everything got to thrive off this negativity and this dumb shit. But a lot of times, all the nigga next to you need is just somebody to encourage him. Give him a little bit of motivation before you jump on his motherfucking ass. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I kind of come in because, of course, I'm going to have that, that nurturing, motherly love type of spirit. But I also bring that force. Because when it comes to a female in business, that's a wrecking ball that you don't necessarily play with. So it's like Ton gets to have fun playing good cop, bad cop type shit. Like this nigga stepped out the camera and threw everything that my way and was like, somebody called me like, yo, you was supposed to do that. I, I called Dejan. Nigga, what? I ain't Ton. Why he calling me? I told that nigga to call you because look, I ain't. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the type of time we, we kind of switching out these positions so that he can focus in on his career and I can really step up and run the company has like he has for the past five years. What motivates you? This, stuff like this, um, I feel honored every time I get invited to do an interview, to be completely honest. Because why the fuck y'all want to know about me? You know, <laughs> like, what intrigues you to want to know about me? You know what I'm saying? So stuff like this, it really, really, really makes me 
want to keep going it shows me that you know people are truly paying attention i'm reading the comments and the things that people have to say when we do these different events when i post these different things like i pay attention i'm a sociologist so i pay a lot of attention to people's reactions to things and how they respond to things because that lets you know you know what to feed your people so it's really the people that motivate me hearing those thank yous at the end of the day it ain't a dollar amount that can amount to seeing people accomplish their dreams and knowing that I was the link somewhere in that. There's nothing better than at the end of the day just hearing a genuine thank you. You know what I'm saying? Money can't amount to that. Those are those are those the best moments. Now, what was the time or times that you maybe contemplated quitting? You said contemplate quitting? Hell every day. <laughs> every day. Um being a manager and being in control of pretty much all of your company is not always really an easy task like some days i've got all my artists on my ass like drop this i need that can you check this can you send this email can you answer this how do i do this like so some days i they'll tell you i don't answer my phone okay most days i don't answer my phone because <laughs> i deal with things in my you know what i'm saying in my own little way like i have a way about going by everything so sometimes it gets a little overwhelming and then when you throw battle rap in on top of that man listen niggas want you to answer you answer them on you know what i'm saying their time in battle rap so that's another thing that gets annoying because they will double text your motherfucking ass if you don't answer fast enough you feel what i'm saying so um i get overwhelmed more than anything i never really want to quit sometimes i just kind of want to just stand back in the shadows and see what else is going on around me or what I could do to minimize my presence and maximize the power. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I want to quit every day. Every day I wake up and I say, fuck work. Every time I got to get behind the computer, it's like, fuck work. But I do that shit to perfection in the world to the best of my abilities and the best of my abilities is perfection. So, so what are your ultimate goals? To see everybody I'm pushing be successful. See, the thing that people forget about as a manager, you are not successful until your artists are successful. I don't make a dime until they make a dime. So in order for me to really get up here, they got to get up here. You know what I'm saying? The hosting, the promoting, the parties, the events, the battle rap, it's all good. But DTM is my baby. You know what I'm saying? Just like Pyrex is my baby on this end, DTM is my baby. That's my heart. I, I birthed her. You know what I'm saying? So. For me to actually feel like I've done something great, it's gonna take everybody around me, like Lil Gordon being one of the number one Billboard artists, like DJ Big Sal being on tour with some of the greatest, you know what I'm saying? Or you got Bando booming out here, humming tunes with the, the Drakes and shit out here. Polo Poppy Ortiz, you know what I'm saying? Mochetta, you know what I'm saying? That's, I knew I was tripping. Mochetta, that's, that's another one of my artists. Like, views crazy you know what i'm saying when when those boys are out here and i can call their names and you start rapping their lyrics damn it they john that made it too so is there anything you have coming up or better question what does the next 365 days look like for dejan t management work 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 <laughs> um even when i'm working i'm working you feel what i'm saying if i got my phone in my hand nine times out of ten i'm working even when i'm chilling i'm working um, I do a lot of planning. If you see me with my notebooks, I'm working. If you see me doing the dumb shit on the book, I'm working. Like, um, I'm supposed to have a show coming up July 24th. That's supposed to be an indie showcase, of course. Um, I might actually push, push that one back because I have a few industry friends that want to pop out. So I might push that one back, but you can definitely look forward to another DTM show coming. Um, you got the DTM concert, which is usually my biggest concert of the year in October. That's going to be another situation. As far as battle rap goes, we got the one that everybody's waiting on. In the beginning, too, um, that's a different story. You know what I'm saying? That's when we dressed it up real good. We really pop the fuck out. We show out male versus female. Like, it's really a dope vibe. And it's a different vibe because it's not something that the culture is used to popping out in casual clothes and standing in front of a nigga being called a bitch. Like, it's a different vibe when we do in the beginning. Um, what else we got coming up? Um, probably gonna do a few listening parties for my artists closer to the year, end of the year. Fourth quarter, we always pop out strong. Got a few major, major, major announcements coming for next year that I ain't ready to speak on just yet, but DCM is always working. Like, shit just pops up out of nowhere. And we, oh, got an interview in Atlanta um, next weekend. Got um, 
Garden of the Gates got Keith out there next weekend, so I'm definitely gonna pop out and support that. Yeah, I actually do got a lot of shit going. I've been forgetting, bro. All right, so before we wrap up, can you tell you know anyone who may want to work with you, collab with you, may see, maybe seeking a, a manager, or anyone who wants to maybe start battle rapping, how can they reach you? Um, everything Dejan T. Facebook Dejan T. D A J O N space. T E E. Not D John, not Day John, not even De John. De John. De John. T. Okay. <laughs> um, IG Dejan T management. Twitter Dejan T. Like I said, Facebook Dejan T. Go to my website www.dejantmgt.com. Email me Dejan T management at gmail.com. Everything is Dejan T. All right, and to close things out, my personal new favorite segment, top five. So our top five for you is your top five proudest moments you've had as a manager, promoter, or battle rap staff member. Um, let's see. All right, number five, top five moment would probably be the first time I heard Lil Gordon on 103.9. The shit was so beautiful, like because it was it was really him that opened a lot of doors for DTM. Like without Lil Gordon and who he's growing to be, Dejan T would not even be half of what she's become. So knowing that I put in that work, he go in the studio and he put in that work and he really trusts his craft in my hands to grow it. You know what I'm saying? When we turned on that radio and I got that email saying that your music gonna be spinning on 103.9, like I went crazy. But to put on top of that, you know what I'm saying? The same day his shit dropped, the only plug, rest in peace, his shit dropped on 103.9. The same day his shit dropped, you had Freeport Donnie shit drop. Mind you, all of these songs are dropping on Hot 103.9, which is the biggest radio station where we come from. All of these songs are dropping on Hot 103.9, and we're actually on our way to, what, Tampa or Miami for a show. So we literally had to tune in on the internet on our phones to catch our first uh, radio drop. So. That's number five. And to say that's number five, it, it can only get bigger, right? Um, number four, probably when me and Lil Gordon drove to Miami to do Miami Live. That was a really, really, really dope experience because we got to meet a lot of people from a lot of different places. Like, you would think that because the club is in the middle of Miami on the Strip, most of the artists would be from Florida. Nah, we met people from Cali. We met artists from Chicago, artists from Tennessee. We met artists from goddamn Kalamazoo and Zamunda. Like, everybody in their mama was off in there. You know what I'm saying? Um, and to this very day, I actually still keep in touch with one of the producers real good. So... That was, that was a really, really dope moment. And again, the moments are only dope for me when it involves my artists actually leveling up because it shows me that if they're able to go to that next level, that means I've done something right in the background as far as business goes. Um, number three would have to be, um, my first event in Columbia. The event that I did at Lux Studios, like, the very, very, very first show that DTM did, it was um, it was up under my SC Indie Grind brand. Um, the show was huge. Like I had QC um, producers there. I had um, Zaytown Tone in the building. I had SC Top Ten in the build. I mean SC Top Twenty in the building. I had um, I had a lot of different industry friends in the building that day. And literally, I did this with no promotions other than my own and the artists that were a part of the show and it was packed out that was my very first event but the one that comes in number three that makes me proud is the one that looks literally when i pulled up to this event at like 11 15 11 30 there was nowhere for me to park like it was completely fucking packed out i went in the building looking like a little nigga you feel me like i had to work so i went in there basketball shorts tank top nigga i had my fucking hair tied up and everything and ain't nobody noticed who i was sliding to the bathroom when I came out there dressed, oh, they knew what time it was. And I'm talking about we went up that night. Like, we had about 42 different artists perform that night. Like, the show was fucking amazing. But that solidified my brain. That solidified Dejan T and what she meant to the music scene in South Carolina. Um, number two. Number two would have to be... Okay, 
it's all one big moment because I don't know how to split it up. Number two would have to be the whole um, EQ distro situation between Lil Gordon, the only plug, and Alexia Rose. Um, they got signed to a major distribution deal with Equity Distro. Not only did they do that, but from the same A&R who helped assist, you know what I'm saying, who threw the alley for that play to come through, um, we actually got invited to do South by Southwest. That was major because it was an official South by Southwest event and it wasn't like we were just on like, you know, a little bullshit stage off to the side. No, we were like in the midst and we had the big flyer and it said Dejan T showcase and like the South by Southwest tag. Like it was crazy because when I signed Freeport Donnie, the very first thing he asked me was get me to South by Southwest. He didn't want anything more than for me to take him to South by Southwest. And I was able to accomplish that within one year. So that was a real big one. But then COVID hit, changed everything for us. But I'm not too much worried about that because the same way I got it the first time, trust me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back around again. So y'all just listen out for that. Um, and number one, like I just said, it would really have to be the feedback that we've gotten from that off the porch interview um it was different you know what i'm saying like going back checking my numbers on instagram and my page is reaching 75,000 and 80,000 fucking people every 30 days like when my reach every single day is four and five thousand people when you got fucking emails and text messages and dms from people from all over the world and everybody saying thank you for speaking up you know what I'm saying? Thank you for telling the world this is really what it is for us. Thank you for showing them that all this shit not glitz and glam. Like, I kid you not. When we did the DGB interview, I started, I went to that interview with 1.4K followers. The day that interview dropped, I gained a thousand followers that day. <laughs> I had, I gained a thousand followers that day. I had 119 inquiries on my website and I had hundreds of message requests and I literally went through and answered every single one of them that was pertaining to music that's just what I do now what you do after I give you the information you need that's up to you but that that really 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 made me proud because the people was fucking with what I was saying you know what I'm saying it wasn't on no clout chasing it wasn't on no you know what I'm saying she might be the next best thing but it was real life on some no this bitch right there what she talking about the comments that stuck out the most was when people were saying stuff like she think like Missy Elliott. She gives me Missy Elliott vibes. Everybody knows that's one of my fucking idols. You know what I'm saying? So stuff like that meant a lot to me. Somebody told me like, you got the mindset like Master P, keep going. I'm honored to even have a compliment like that. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be some noodles or some chips, and they on his shit. You know? Um, it changed a lot for us. My book, my DJ started getting booked like crazy. They coming for Lil Gordon like crazy. Every promo that I drop is going crazy. Pyrex is going up like you can mention my name in groups now you know what I'm saying and the first thing they're gonna say is oh you talking about the girl from Pyrex you know what I'm saying so everything that I do from the billboards to the radio spins to the shows everything that you see that's based around Dejan T is fucking golden so to be a part of that that's always gonna be that number one thing all right well I have to commend you you know for everything you've done because I mean I, I think I've known you for less than a year and I mean since then I've Definitely seeing a lot of the work that you put in. Um, like I said she told y'all how to where to follow her. Dejan, not Dijon, not Dejan. <laughs> Dejan T Management. This has been another episode of Dynasty R T V signing out. Yes, sir.